wake up in a dark, cold dungeon. You don't remember how you got here, and you don't know what's going on. You rub your head because it hurts. Your ears are ringing. Hey, calm down and focus! Creepy puzzles are waiting for you, and at the end of the video, you'll see how good at them you are. You see several strange symbols scratched on a brick wall. It's four vertical stripes, three stripes below, and a check mark even lower. Next, you come to a grid. A huge, rusty lock is hanging on it. There's no key. Look around and try to figure out how you can get out. Have you noticed that brick that sticks out of the wall? Try pushing it! Ha! Ah, it worked! A secret door opens and you make your way outside. You go down the stairs and see a large hall. Several torches light up and you spot four huge mirrors. They reflect Frankenstein, a skeleton, a zombie, and a vampire. One of these creatures is a human being. Can you guess who it is? Vampires don't get reflected in the mirror, so you're looking at a human. He gives you a small bone and warns that you will need it. You get outside and realize you're in the courtyard. This is the territory of a large, sinister castle. There are no clouds in the sky, and the sun is hidden behind one of the tall towers. You can see three gates ahead. A werewolf is next to the first one. A second gate is guarded by a huge scorpion the size of a car. And the third gate has a scary, alive gargoyle. Something is wrong here. Uh -oh. Find out what exactly. The sun is shining brightly, so there's no full moon. So what's a werewolf doing here? It's just a human in a costume. The werewolf opens the gate, and you go through. You're back in the castle and step into a small room. There are cobwebs everywhere and a lot of garbage on the floor. You can see a jar of salt on the table and a note on the wall. It says, a circle of salt. You decide to take the jar just in case. At this point, a slippery, viscous liquid starts dripping onto your shoulder. You look up and see a big spider descending towards you on its web. You run away and see three doors. You can hear screaming behind the first one. Behind the second door, you hear the sound of a chainsaw. A dog is barking behind the third one. Quickly, you've got to decide where to go. Run to the third door. Yeah, you'll meet an angry dog, but you have a bone. You throw it, and the dog immediately feels better. It nibbles on its trophy and forgets all about you. On the floor, you can see human footprints that lead to the next door. You push the handle down. It's locked. Look around the room and find the key. The dog is gnawing on the bone, and the key is glinting on its collar. You pet the dog and gently remove the key from its neck. You open the door. It's dark, and you can't see anything. You take a small step forward and fall into a deep hole. Fortunately, you're not hurt. On the ground, you find an old MP3 player with headphones. It still has some battery left. Great, you put it in your pocket. You can't climb up the smooth walls of the pit. But you can see that someone has thrown down two ropes for you to get out. One rope is white and slightly shining. The other looks quite ordinary. Choose which you should use to get out. The white rope is a spider web. The spider is still chasing you. So you choose the normal rope. You get out of the pit. The rope is tied to a marble pillar. You untie it and put it in your pocket. You slowly walk down a dark corridor and hear a growl behind you. It's a werewolf! The full moon is out. You run out of the corridor and find yourself in the street. There are three paths ahead of you. The first road is covered with lava. The second one is swarming with snakes. And the third road leads to a poisonous lake. Hurry up, the werewolf is coming!
there's a shoe lying right on the water on the left side of the lake. This means that the lake is frozen. You're sliding on the ice and falling. The werewolf is still chasing you, but it slips too, and you have time to run to the solid ground. There's a massive tower ahead. You run inside and close the door. You find yourself in a circular hall lit by torches. Human faces appear on the walls. Their hands begin to reach out. The phantoms are slowly approaching you. They're everywhere, surrounding you. What will you do? Remember that jar of salt and the note saying, a circle of salt? You should spill salt around you, and the phantoms won't dare cross that line. You do, and then wait for a while, and they disappear. You climb up a spiral staircase to the top of the tower. The door slams shut behind you. There's one window and an iron torch stand mounted on the wall. In the center of the room, you notice a wide bed, surrounded by a white veil. You push the veil aside with your hand and see that two zombies are sleeping there. They open their eyes, get up, and slowly walk towards you. What are you going to do now? Use the rope you found before. Tie it to the torch stand and go down through the window. Great! The zombies are too stupid to pull the rope back. You're on the ground and see a car. At this moment, the werewolf breaks out of the castle. You get into the vehicle and lock the door. The werewolf hits the window with its paws. You can't find the key. It's probably in the glove compartment, but it has a three-digit combination lock. Recall the beginning of your adventure and try to guess the code. Hurry up before the werewolf breaks the glass. In the dungeon where you woke up, there were several signs on the wall. Four vertical stripes, three stripes below them, and a checkmark even lower. The checkmark is the Roman numeral 5. Then the code is 435. You take out the key, start the engine, and drive away. You leave the castle but realize the car's brakes don't work. There are three roads ahead. A brick wall is at the end of the first one. The second road leads to a burning forest. And the third road ends on a high hill with a cliff. What path will you choose? There's almost no time! You're driving too fast! Release the gas pedal and drive up the hill. The speed will soon drop. At one point, you'll be able to get out of the vehicle. You jump out of the car and it falls off the cliff. You go around the hill and get into a swamp. You make your way through the marsh and see three women in front of you. Which one is a mermaid? The woman in the middle has something strange on her neck. Those are gills. The second girl has webbed fingers. The girl on the left seems normal. She's a human. You pass through the swamps and find yourself on the seashore. An old motorboat is lying on the sand. You push it to the water, start the engine, and climb inside. You go far away from the island with the castle. In the distance, you see some rocks and shipwrecks. You slow down and hear beautiful singing. It's coming from several women staying on top of the rocks. They're sirens. Using their singing, they lure sailors whose ships crash against the rocks. You move straight toward them and can't resist it. The rocks are getting closer and closer. Do something, quickly! You still have your MP3 player you found in the pit. You put on the headphones, turn on the music, and go away. The engine stalls. Far ahead, you can see an outline of another island. You grab an oar and start rowing. A few hours pass, you're hungry and thirsty. There are fish swimming in the water, and you find a can of worms in the boat. But how can you catch them without a fishing rod? Use one of your shoelaces. Tie the bait to it and lower it into the water. It works! You catch a few fish, but then you notice a shark's fin. It circles you and pushes the boat. The island is really close, but you need to get away from the dangerous creature. How are you going to solve this problem?
throw the fish you've caught as far as possible. This will distract the shark and give you some time to get to the shore. Done. But unfortunately, you've given your lunch away to the sea hunter. Exhausted, you get to the shore. Here, you meet a man. It says it was him who left you the MP3 player and the rope. He also wrote the code on the wall of the dungeon. Without a word, you kick him in the shins and he hobbles off. No, you don't, but I sure would. Anyway, you're glad that everything is over and just lie down on the sand. But the man tells you it's not the time to relax. Other tough tests are waiting for you. You hear bizarre sounds coming from the jungle. But that's another story, and this one is coming to an end. Time to find out your score. 0 to 4 points, eh, don't get upset. You can do better, but it's a bad idea for you to go to magic castles. 5 to 8 points, hmm, not bad. You've proved that you're brave, but you were a little lacking in resourcefulness. You will solve other riddles better. 9 to 12 points, hmm, almost perfect. You've passed the test and proved that you can get out of any dangerous situation alive. 13 to 15 points, it's not you who should run away from the monsters. They should be wary of you. Any mystical castle can become your home. A shrill ringing of your phone jolts you awake. Your friend, the best detective in the city, is on the line. I don't have time to explain. I'm leaving the city in 20 minutes. You'll have to replace me for the next week or two. Don't try to contact me. As he hangs up, you're left sitting on your bed, the phone in your hand, staring into the darkness of your room. You have to deal with your first case already in the morning. An anxious man rushes into your friend's office. I work as a cashier in a clothing store. Last night, I was the one to lock it up. As I was counting the money, the room suddenly went dark. There was some problem with the light bulb. I climbed the table and grabbed it. But by doing it, I burned my hand, jerked it back, fell to the floor, and lost consciousness. When I came to my senses, the money was gone. You examine the room attentively and realize the man is lying. What makes you think so? The light bulb the cashier told you about is an LED one. Such light bulbs don't get hot. Your first real case makes you hungry. You go to the nearest restaurant to get something to eat. But as soon as you enter, you hear loud, angry voices. A waitress and a visitor are arguing. You also ordered chicken wings, and you have to pay for this dish. It's the waitress. The visitor looks tired and sleepy. But I didn't. I haven't been here longer than an hour. Yes, I did doze off. But it doesn't mean I don't remember my order. You can't help but step in. You know very well that this man couldn't have ordered chicken wings, you say. How did you figure it out? You spotted a note on the wall. It says, the kitchen works till 1 p.m. today. It's now 3 p.m. The man claims he's been there for an hour, which means he came well after the kitchen was closed. After the accident, you decide to have a meal at another cafe. But as you come closer, you see a crying lady. I was going to cross the road when some woman grabbed my purse and disappeared. I noticed her enter this cafe. Can you help me get my things back? You enter the cafe. Ah, that's my purse, right between those two women. But I can't recognize the one who took it. I didn't have time to look at her attentively. You don't need much time to figure out which woman is guilty. It's the one on the left. The woman on the right has her left arm in a cast. If she had taken the purse, she'd have put it on the right side of herself. After such an eventful day, you're exhausted. You fall asleep as soon as your head touches the pillow. But you get woken up just a few hours later. Another day, another case. Oh, you're finally here. A man tied to a chair looks happy. Someone broke into my house this night, tied me, and stole all our valuables. Our mailman came early in the morning to deliver newspapers. He must have heard me shouting for help and called the police. Luckily, all our stuff was insured. But I hope to deal with this problem before my wife finds out about this. You arrest the man for attempting insurance fraud. Why? You paid attention that the newspapers were on the table in the hall. 
not lying on the floor near the mail slot. Someone must have put them there. It could only be the house owner or his wife, who was an accomplice. After the police arrive, you leave the man's house and immediately receive a new call. Mrs. Smith claims that her neighbor, Mrs. Miller, has stolen her laundry. The woman says she hung the laundry in her backyard at 10 a.m. And when she went out of the house two hours later, she saw Mrs. Miller putting it in her bag. I didn't do this. It's a lie. The other woman looks angry. You look around and ask Mrs. Smith to go to the police station with you for trying to slander her neighbor. How did you figure out that Mrs. Smith was lying? It's freezing outside, and there's snow on the roofs. In two hours, damp laundry would be so frozen, it'd be impossible to fold it and put it in a bag. Your phone rings again. It's a woman who works at a museum. You must help me, she cries. When you arrive at the museum, she tells you her story. Yesterday, I stayed late at work. I needed to prepare some documents. I was sitting at this table. The overhead lights were off, and the only source of light was my desk lamp. I was listening to music when, suddenly, I saw a shadow to the right of the table. I realized it was a person jumping out of the open window. I immediately switched on the overhead lights and discovered that an ancient vase I kept in my office was gone. This vase costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. You didn't believe this story. Why? If the only source of light had been a desk lamp standing in front of the woman, she wouldn't have noticed the shadow to the right of the table. It turns out that before leaving, your detective friend gave your contacts to all his acquaintances. And now, one of them needs your help. You arrive at his jewelry store. A client came there several hours ago, planning to buy an expensive diamond ring for his wife. But someone stole his wallet right in the store. The manager, he was the one to call you asked all the visitors who were inside at that time to stay until your arrival. You look at all these people attentively. Soon you know who took the wallet. It's the man in the middle. He has a bandage on his right arm, but it's wrapped over the sleeve of his jacket, not hidden under it like a real bandage would be. You knock on a sturdy brown door while a woman with a bandage on her head stands next to you. A man opens the door. Excuse me, you say. A pot plant fell out of your window an hour ago and hit this woman on her head. I had to take her to the hospital. She's okay now, but you need to compensate this woman for the damage. May we come in? The man turns pale but lets you in. It can't be true. Our windows were closed because we have just returned home. I literally entered my apartment two minutes before you came. You realize this man is lying and call the police. How did you figure it out? You spotted a pan with boiling water in the kitchen. If the man had indeed come home just a few minutes ago, the water wouldn't have had enough time to start boiling. Now, it's your friend who needs help. She owns a grocery store. A gust of wind blew a $100 bill out of her hands and the money seems to have vanished into thin air. Your friend thinks it was one of the customers who took the bill, but no one wants to admit stealing the money. You ask all visitors to go to your friend's office when a woman speaks up. It's incredible to be accused of theft. Here, you can check my bags right now. Please, just come with me to the office. We'll figure it out there, you say. After the woman refuses to follow you, you call the police. Why? The woman is standing on the $100 bill. If she follows you, everyone will see the money. The next morning, rainy and gloomy, you get your next case. To investigate it, you need to visit the office of a large international company. Rebecca, the girl who called you, works there. She says, I've just come back from brunch and discovered that someone had knocked our HR manager out just an hour ago. You question the people who were in the office at that time. Laura is an applicant. She says she was a bit angry with the HR manager. He made her wait well past her appointment time. And still, the girl says, I would never hit another person. I'm also too weak to do it. 
Gary, who works in the marketing department, claims he hasn't seen the HR manager since he arrived at work. He was in a meeting from the very morning till lunchtime. Jacob from Research and Development tells you he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He's just come back. You immediately realize who hit the HR manager. It was Jacob. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is that possible if it's raining outside? You leave Rebecca's office and hear your phone beeping. You see a text with an address you don't know. You drive there. A man meets you at the door of a large building. He's shaking. When you enter a large dark hall, you see two containers filled with transparent liquid. Two women are floating inside. They look identical. One of them is my wife, but I can't figure out which one. And I'm allowed to open only one container. You walk around the women and examine them. Then you point at one of them. That's your wife. How did you figure it out? The man's name is Mark. It's written on his biker jacket. His wife is the woman with the letter M tattooed on her arm. Your phone beeps again. You look at it and see a message. It's from your detective friend. There's just one word on the screen. Help! But that's already another story.